All right, welcome everybody. We have Romain Panay from uh, Lines Lifts Limited. How are you doing today, Romain? I'm doing great, thank you. Thank you for having me. Absolutely, absolutely. So why don't you start out today, Romain? Well, what do you do? So what do I do? Um, I started Line Lift uh, just a little over a year ago. And what we do is that uh, essentially we buy and sell heavy construction machinery. So what that means is that we uh, help people source construction machinery. We help people sell their, uh, their, their inventory. Uh, we basically connect the dots between uh, people who are looking to buy machines and people who are looking to sell machines. Um, sure. We don't do just that. We also connect people together when, you know, somebody needs parts, somebody needs service. Um, it just, we don't necessarily need to make money by any means. We just try to, you know, like say, hey, I know this guy, um, he can probably help you. And then we put them in touch and then we just get the, get the, the network growing. And, uh, you know, it's a small world, so it's always good to have lots of friends everywhere. For sure, for sure, man. And how long have you been doing this for and working in the field? Uh, I've been working in the field. I was hired by a local company in Vancouver back in 2012 uh, <laughs> when I uh, recently arrived in uh, BC. Actually, I, I arrived in BC 2009. So um, I, was, I was here for a little bit. So it's been, uh, it's been about 10 years. So I was, uh, I was employed by this company for, for quite a few years. And I started my own company pretty much right, uh, right after that uh, in 2021, uh, May 2021. Okay, for sure. Awesome. Awesome. And uh, who would you say is either your best customer, or the best types of customers, the kind of clientele you deal with on the most frequent basis? You know what, Jason, I got a, I got a lot of, a lot of customers. Um, funny enough, I don't deal with anybody in Vancouver, actually. Uh, oh, really? because yeah. Most of, yeah, most of my customer base are located on the East Coast. So, mm -hmm. you know, comp companies in Montreal, in Toronto, I mostly work with, uh, you know, like the, um, with uh, with East Coast time, um, I, I want to say that I have some very strong relationship with some rental companies. So mm -hmm. what happens is that those guys, they need to have machines in their fleet to yeah. rent them out to their customers. Mm -hmm. So, you know, like they buy quite a bit of machines in high volume. And so I'm their guy to help them source machines, especially now with COVID that, you know, it's tough to find brand new machinery. So everybody is looking to buy used and I'm, I'm their main source of equipment. I, or at least I try to be. Gotcha, gotcha. And um, kind of more of a niche question for yourself. You know, we're, we're kind of seeing right now the used like automobile industry is, is mm -hmm. trending really high with the price of units. Are you finding the same thing is translating over to your field as well? Or is it the other way? Yeah, it's, it's the exact same. Uh, okay, the, lead yeah. the lead time to buy machines, brand new machines sometimes goes, you know, like over a year, sometimes two years. Um, yeah. It, it, yeah, it takes a very long time to receive a machine once you buy a brand new one. And, you know, like everything is fast paced. So sometimes you just can't afford to wait that long. So um, companies that used to buy brand new machines now are, you know, like I said, buying used equipment. And so I've actually never sold any new machines, um, be, uh, you know, like ever. Uh, so I'm like more like a used equipment guy. So it's kind of like playing out well for me um, because sure. I have lots of customers that I didn't used to work with before that are now contacting me because I can I can help them source this kind of equipment. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. And um, you know, like you were saying, you kind of worked through 2021 and and that that time period. Mm -hmm. Were there any kind of uh, business changes or considerations you had to make as you worked, you know, your business, you worked with clientele through COVID, or was business pretty much the same throughout? No, it's tough. You know, like it's it's a really tough industry. Um, you know, like COVID kind of like changed the whole dynamic. Like I said, um, you know, like you, you got a thing that, you know, pretty much like a car when you want to buy, when you want to build a machine, like the whole machine is not built in one factory, right? Like there's yeah. lots of different factories that are gravitating around. And back, you know, during the COVID pandemic, when one person had COVID, the whole you know, like factory, the little factory had to shut down, which was slowing down the whole process. So, um, you know, like it, it was, it was harder to, it was harder to source new machines. So everybody was buying used equipment, which drove the price up. Um, you know, like if we compare to, you know, like the market two or three years ago, um, mm -hmm. oof, like some machines are maybe like 30, 30% 30 more expensive than wow, what they really? used to be. Mm -hmm. On top of that, you know, like selling the machine is not just that. I, when I sell the machine, it's like a hands-off service for the customer. I also deliver the machine. So I work with freight company, freight brokers. And I mean, like just like look around the corner, right? Like the, the, price, the gas price is yeah. it's crazy. Um, so that's really increasing, you know, like the cost for everybody as well. You know, like 
um, before shipping a machine from like a standard machine from Vancouver to Montreal was let's say for example 4,000 now you're close to at least twice the price sometimes 10 grand just just to do the exact same thing so it's yeah. it's a whole different ball game it's uh it's it's a different market it's a different strategy but i guess you know like everybody has to go along with it so you explain to the customer and i mean it is what it is absolutely and are you find a lot of the way that you guys have to adjust business during the during the pandemic has continued to do now like you said you know it just kind of is a reality of, of where prices of, of gas and other things are at right yeah. now is it just continuing the same or were, were there other considerations that you're continuing to do now yeah, it's, it's kind of continuing the same. It just, like I said, you have to adjust. You have, uh, you know, like, unfortunately, you have to to increase your prices because, you know, like me, I, I buy machines for my own inventory. So I own some equipment, but I'm also a middleman. So if the machine that I want to buy is more expensive, I can't sell it for the same price. So you just, you know, you just, you just adapt. And I mean, you know, like people are, I mean, you know, like j- just look around you. Everything is, everything's more expensive now. And unfortunately, that's one of the consequences of COVID. So, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's all about at the end of the day, my, my industry, um, what, what I do, you know, uh, selling a machine when it's on my machine, selling somebody else's machine, anybody can do what I do, right? Anybody can sell that other machine to that other person. Mm-hmm. So it's all about the service that you provide and who you are as a person. And that's how we make a difference. So uh, we try to, you know, like give like a very, very good service to our customers. So at least they know that price is high. Okay, we get it. But at least we're here for you every step of the way. Absolutely. You know, that's even something we talk to a lot of our clients about. about. We call it, you know, the delivery side of the business. Making mm-hmm. sure that your clients are always getting a consistent service from you, from your business, whether it's they're dealing with you, they're dealing with an employee, they're dealing with, you know, the front desk person, whatever that case may be, they're always getting that continued um, consistent service. So they know what they can expect from you. So even if there is, say, a, a challenge that arises or a situation that was unknown that that shows up, they, they have the confidence because they have so much consistency out of your business. They're like, hey, you know, yeah. I know I know Romain is going to gonna take care of us. He's a good guy. You know, we've worked with him for a long time. They're always on the ball with stuff. So I know they got it. Is yeah, absolutely important. Absolutely. There, there's so many things that we do not control right now in the world. Um, mm-hmm. At least, you know, like, let's try to at least, you know, like, yeah, have our hands on the little things, uh, which is, you know, like just be, just being a good guy and taking care of our customers. Absolutely. And a big part of that, too, I'm sure you I'm sure you you guys do this as well, is just communicating uh, consistently yeah. with your clientele. Right. You know, setting those expectations up front, talking about what the what the journey is going to be like from maybe when they get in touch with you first, when they you know get that piece of machinery delivered and, yeah. and what all the pieces are along the way. So as long as you have that consistent open communication with them, you're managing, you know, expectations and stuff like that. Like you, yeah. you have a great client journey throughout the whole process. Absolutely. One hundred percent. Now, this is a little bit of a, a, a thinker maybe for you, Ramin, but what would you say is one of the biggest learning lessons that you've had since being a business owner? Sheesh. You know, lots of uh, up and downs. I, I started my company, my baby was two months old. So, you know, like it was a learning curve on every single aspect of my personal life. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, in, in a, it's been, it's only been a year, but we are, you know, like we're six people working for the company now. So I, I, I was, uh, you know, like able to grow pretty fast and, and build a, a team um, around me of people working full time with me at the, uh, my office downtown. So, you know, like it's, um, I mean, so many things I've learned, but something that I always try to keep in mind in my personal life is that, um, you know, like through the up and downs of my life is just that everything, you know, like nothing ever lasts. So, you know, like sometimes you feel like you're, you're, you're in, you know, like you have an issue with a machine or issue with a customer or something like that. Don't let your emotion take the, be- the best out of you and always try to keep cool and think that this is only going to be temporary. And mm-hmm. same thing with the good things, you know, like when you're in a good success and when you're on a roll, uh, always think that this is temporary as well. And, and always try to question yourself um, to try to just be better the, the next day. And, you know, like that works for my personal life. That works for my business. Um, you know, like always try to keep my head cool and never try to uh, to get too emotional about the things that are good or bad. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, having that consistent EQ, that emotional quote, and right. Uh, one of my old mentors used to say, right, you have to, what do you say? You have to ride the emotional roller coaster of being a business owner is what he is. Cause it really is right. There are those really high highs and sometimes there are those really low lows, exactly. right? Exactly. But if you're consistent all the way through, you know, you can celebrate your wins. Absolutely. When time, when times are tough, you can sometimes feel a little bit down. That's just being human. Right. But if you, yeah. if you stay even all the way through, you can kind of 
um, um, manage that storm really well. Yeah, exactly. Think, because this is this is also contagious, right? Like 100%. you know, like you, your employees are feeling this energy off of you. Your customers are feeling this energy off of you when you come home. You know, your wife, your your child, like everybody is, you know, like sort of like um, feeling this. And so you know, like of course, like you said, you know, like celebrating the wins is 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 a big thing, but also not try to be greedy and always think that you know, like there's always going to be something behind. Behind the behind the corner, good or bad. Yeah, absolutely. We, you know, that's something we actually we talk to a lot of our uh, our, our business owners, uh, our clients that have seasonal businesses, maybe where they're super busy during one portion of the year, and then they slow right down. It's like, hey, those systems that you're building right now, we understand you're busy, but you're going to need to continually bring in business, you know, as it sometimes slow down too, or prepare for that time, even though things look great right now, you know, people are calling the phones ringing great, but what happens when that phone stops? You know, if you have that phenomenal uh, lead generation strategies, bringing in a ton of business, what, what happens if that shifts like 10 or 20% up or down, right? That's what right. does that look like? Great point. That's Absolutely. Right. Um, Romain, say somebody's looking in the, in the market for some machinery, uh, what's the best for them to get in touch with you uh, in order to, you know, fulfill your service? Oh. Yeah, well, I mean, we, we do uh, quite a bit of work. Actually, we have a great marketing manager who is, you know, like uh, putting some ads on different uh, different websites. And, uh, mm -hmm. you know, like she's also doing a good job at referencing a website. Um, so I want to say that, um, yeah, you know, like uh, our, our website is, is a good way to get a hold of us. Uh, we also, I mean, we actually have some work, some work to do. I'm not a huge social media person, so I, it's something yeah. that I need to work on. Uh, to uh, to have more visibility, but um, yeah, we try to be all across the map on the, um, the different you know like listings for machinery. So essentially, if you're looking for a machine, uh, you will most likely find us there because uh, we we advertise quite a bit there. 100%. Okay, great. Yeah, we'll include your your contact info as well below uh, below the video, so people can get in touch with you when they if they need. That. And uh, the last question for you to remain: What would you say is the most inspiring thing to you today? Oh, uh, the most empire. Yeah. You know, it's, uh, actually, actually this is, uh, yeah, this is going to be a little personal, but you know, my, uh, my, my wife's dad, he, um, he kind of has like the same story as I had, even though it's completely different. He mm -hmm. was born, he was born in Palestine. He was born in a refugee camp and he left Canada when he was 19 years old. And, uh, you know, like he came into this country and you know like had to raise um two beautiful daughters on his own and 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 he you know like had a few business and now is a successful restaurant owner in Chilliwack. and um to me that's something inspiring because you know when i came here like i came here with basically nothing i didn't speak mm -hmm. english and i'm you know like starting my family starting my business and it's always something that i try to um to take example from because you know like it's just a He's a he's a very good um, good person and a good example for me. So I'm just thinking that if I can be a good individual, then I will be a good professional. Awesome, I love that. That's a that's an incredible, inspiring story. I love that. Thanks mm -hmm. so much. Well, appreciate the time today, Romain. Like I said, we'll we'll link all your information below. If somebody wants to get in touch with you, and uh, yeah, thank you so much. Yeah, absolutely. It was a uh, great talking to you. Thank you, Jason.